previously this was viewed as a fundamental limitation yeah at a physics level. at a physics level right so the goal is always higher angular resolution you want to be able to resolve smaller and smaller things how fine detail can you resolve something in the night sky mm -hmm. and we want to always push this as far as possible right it's dependent on the wavelength and it's dependent on the size of your aperture okay it's called the Rayleigh limit if you've got two points of light that are really close together, as they are on the right-hand side, yes, then they're going to look like one point of light, and I won't be able to resolve them differently. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if I have two points that are a little bit farther apart, then I can resolve them because they're Gaussian peaks. Mm -hmm. They don't overlap enough. I can resolve the two as separate as things. separate things. Right? This is new work that came out of the UCLA Astrophysics Department. <laughs> what they've done is demonstrate sub diffraction limited astronomical measurement okay the core claim that got me thinking about with this paper was they said the rally criterion is not fundamental so it's like jack sparrow mm. being like it's more like guidelines <laughs> right like not like like i was like what are you talking, are you talking about, about? Right, like right, right, i right. thought the rally criterion i learned this in undergrad and i thought that was it then i started reading so the rally criterion assumes the following the only thing that you're sensitive to is the intensity of the light. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. You've got a telescope. You've got a CCD in the back. The telescope creates an image. The CCD then tells how much intensity of light is coming from this direction, this direction, and it creates an image. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. But light is an electromagnetic wave, and there is phase information, right? Right. Because the electromagnetic wave is coming at you. At some point, it's going to be up. At some point, it's going to be down this right. way, Right. right? There's a phase, there's a timing yes. that the light is coming through. And yes. if you can extract the timing, then you have both parts of the wave. You have the amplitude, which is the intensity, which yes. you already had. Yes. And you also have the timing in which that wave yes. packet came in. Yes. Right? Yes. And what these guys are doing now is they're getting sensitive to the phase of that light, mm -hmm. creating much more information mm -hmm. out of that single mm -hmm. resolution. Out of, the, out of the existing system that's already there. Yes. It, which is like a key. What they're looking at is um, a star in Canis Minoris, Beta CMI. It's 162 light years away. It's surrounded by a gas of hydrogen. Canis Minoris is one of the two dogs that are the hunting companions of Orion, the, the hunter. And so this star specifically, it's got a gas of hydrogen around it. And that gas is spinning so fast that we can see a Doppler shift. There you can see the gas cloud and you can see the clear... Doppler. Yes, red blue shift. Red blue shift, right? Between yes. the part that's coming away from us and the part that's coming towards us. The blue is where it's coming from uh, towards us yeah. and the red is where it's going away. This is where we're we're going yes. way inside yes. what Raleigh even thought was possible. Yes. Okay. Right?